how atoms change into ions, including how you work out the charge on an ion. If you find this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe. We need to remember when a substance reacts, its atoms try to get a full outer shell to be stable. Let's look at some non-metal atoms to start with. The first example is a fluorine atom. Now fluorine, when we look at it on the periodic table, has an atomic number of nine. The bottom number is nine. So that means we need to put two electrons on the first shell and then that shell is full. And that means we need to put seven electrons on the second shell. So atoms have an overall charge of zero because they've always got the same number of positive protons in the nucleus and negative electrons on the shells. So on the case of fluorine, we've got nine positive protons in the nucleus, nine negative electrons on the shells. So overall, a fluorine atom has zero charge. So then it's going to change into a fluoride ion and it does this by gaining one electron to be stable. It needs one more electron to fill that outer shell. So when we draw the fluoride ion, there we can see it's got another electron. We've shown it as a dot this time to show it's come from another atom. And because it won't be overall neutral charge anymore, we draw square brackets around it and we put the charge on it, which in the case of a fluoride ion will be one minus. Now, the reason it's a one minus is we've still got nine positive protons in the nucleus, but now we've got 10 negative electrons. So we've got one more negative electron compared to the positive protons. So overall, that comes to one minus. Now, if you find that really difficult to um, work out the charge on the iron, here's an easy way to find out. As soon as you get in your chemistry exam and the examiner says you may begin, you turn straight away to your periodic table and we start annotating it with the charges of ions. So anything in group one makes a one plus ion. Anything in group two makes a two plus. Group three make three plus. And then we go to the other side. Group zero don't react because they're noble gases with a full outer shell. Group seven make one minus ions. Group six, two minus and group five make three minus. Now the middle block, the transition metals, assume there are two plus unless told otherwise. So if in doubt, two plus. So in the previous example of a fluoride ion, fluorine is in group seven, and we can now see from our annotated periodic table that anything in group seven makes a one minus ion. Let's look at a second example of a non-metal atom turning into an iron. So if we draw an oxygen atom, oxygen has an atomic number of eight. So that's two on the first shell and then six electrons on the second shell. So we can see this time the oxygen atom needs to gain two more electrons to be stable. So we draw it again as the iron. Notice again how the name changes to oxide from oxygen to oxide and we draw it again with the two electrons it's gained, which I've shown as dots. So now it's got a full outer shell and it is stable. Once again, we draw square brackets around it because it's an iron. And if we look at the previous slide, which has got um, the annotated periodic table, we can see that everything in group six, like oxygen, makes a two minus iron. So we put a two minus up there. We're now going to take a look at some metal atoms and how they turn into ions. So example one involves a lithium atom. Lithium has got an atomic number of three. So it's got three electrons. That's two on the first shell, one on the outer shell. So rather than trying to gain seven electrons, it loses one electron. And if you're not sure which one it does, whether it loses or gains, it's the option that involves the transfer of the least number of electrons. So instead of gaining seven, it loses one electron. So then we draw the lithium ion after it's lost that one electron. And we can see it's left with a full outer shell now. And because it's an ion, we draw brackets around it. And this time it's going to be a plus one charge because if we look at our annotated periodic table, everything in group one makes a one plus ion. 
And the reason for that is in the case of lithium, it's still got three positive protons in the nucleus, but now it's only got two negative electrons. So overall, three plus and two minus is a one plus charge. And we can see that the lithium ion is now stable with a full outer shell. Let's take a look at a second example. In this case, magnesium atom turning into a magnesium ion. So we can see from the periodic table that magnesium has an atomic number of 12. So we need to put two electrons on the first shell, eight electrons on the second shell, and then two electrons on the outer shell. So this time magnesium needs to lose two electrons to be stable. So when we draw the ion, we draw it again without those two electrons. And we can see we're left with full shells now. So because it's an iron, we need to remember to draw the square brackets around the iron. And because magnesium is in group two, it's going to form a two plus iron. And we can tell that from our annotated periodic table. And we can now see that the magnesium iron is stable because it's got a full outer shell. Now a tip for your exam, if the question just said, draw a magnesium iron, find somewhere where there's a bit of spare space on that page and draw the magnesium atom first because by drawing out the atom you can then see how many electrons it's got to lose or gain and then draw it again with the brackets round and the charge as your answer for what the iron would look like if you found this video useful don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching